Okay, so today we're back again, and this time we're looking at what we call iteration. Okay, so iteration in math just means the repetition of a process using your previous answer. Okay, and the purpose of that is to make sure we get as close enough or as accurate to the approximation of the answer we are looking for. So iteration just means keep repeating. But as you repeat, you use your previous answer. So you don't use a new answer. You use the answer you got before. You put it back into the formula, get a new answer. That becomes your previous answer. Then you put it back. So you keep repeating the process using the previous answers that you get. So here I've got three questions. But they, in usually GCSE type of questions, this is how it's laid out. So this will be A, B, and C. Usually it's worth about six marks or minimum of five marks. So we're going to quickly go through this, which will help you to be able to do any question on iteration. So this video will not be that long. So first it says, show that the equation 2x cubed minus x squared minus 3 equals 0 has a solution between x equals 1 and x equals 2. This is the easiest one, but mostly students get confused. Okay, Whenever you have this, what they are looking for is that there should be a change of sign in your answers. What I mean by change of sign in your answers means one of your answers will have positive, one of them will have negative. If you get two answers where one is positive, one is negative, then it has a solution. But if they are the same sign, then it does not have a solution. So in this case, they are saying that the solution is between 1 and 2. So we need to find out whether there is a solution or there is not a solution. Usually this is about 2 marks. All you have to do is, you take the x numbers one by one, substitute into the original equation. So here the original equation is 2x cubed minus x squared minus 3 equals to 0. They said it should be between x equals 1, x equals 2. So all I'm doing is I'm going to substitute x equals 1 into this equation. So it means where I see x, I'll put there 1. So here, it says x, 2x cubed. It means x is cubed. So I'm going to cube 1. So substitute, it becomes 2 times by 1 cubed. Okay. Minus x is 1. So 1 squared minus 3. Now let's find the answer to this one. So here we have 2 times by 1 cubed. When you square or cube 1, it's always 1. So this becomes 2. 1 squared is 1, so we have 2 minus 1 minus 3. 2 take away 1 is 1. 1 minus 3 gives you minus 2. So when you substitute 1, it gives you minus 2. Now we are going to substitute 2 into the same equation and see what answer we will get. So in this case, I write it again so you don't get confused. So I'm going to substitute 2 where I see x. So that will be 2, then 2 cubed, minus 2 squared, minus 3. So let's check the answer to see. 2 cubed means 2 times 2 times 2. So 2 cubed is 8. 8 times 2, that is 16 here. This is 2 squared, which means 4. So we have 16 take away 4, then take away 3. So let's look at what that will give us. 16 take away 4 is 12. 12 take away 3 gives you 9. So you can see here, we have 9. So comparing the two answers, this has a negative answer. This has a positive answer. So because there is change of sign, all you have to say is, since there is change of sign, it means there is a solution between x equals 1, x equals 2. Finished. So the sign is different in both answers. That is why there is a solution. If they were both negative, then you conclude by saying, since there is no change of sign, there is no solution. If they were both positive, then the solution is not there. But because there is change of sign, you conclude that there is a solution between x equals 1 and x equals 2. So change of sign means there is a solution. So you can write it there that the change of sign change of sign means 
there is a solution. There is a solution between x equals 1 and x equals 2. So in exam, that's all you have to do. Now this, it says show that this equation, so the equation I solved here, can be rearranged to give this. So they've given you the answer. This is the answer. They want you to show them how you do this to get this answer. So here we want x out to be alone, and we want x with the 2. So all you have to do is to go back to factorizing. What do we mean by factorizing? It means look at the equation, bring the common one out. So bring your highest common factor out. So here our equation is 2x cubed equal to 0. This is x cubed. This is x squared. Okay? This doesn't have any x. So I'm going to move this to this side. So that I have the x's on one side and the number without the x on the other side. So this, I'll write this as 2x cubed minus x squared equals 3. So all I have done is, I've done plus 3 here, plus 3 there. Okay. So now I have the 3 alone. These have x and x, so I need to bring the common letter out. This is x cubed. This is x squared. So it means I can bring the whole x squared out because x cubed is bigger than x squared. So that means x squared is the highest common factor of x cubed and x squared. If you don't understand that, what it means is this. x cubed equals x times x times x. x squared equals x times x. So you see I have three x's here, I have two x's here. So I can bring the two of them out because those are the common ones that I can see. So here, if I want to factorize this, it means I can bring x squared out, which is what I have showed you here. The rest, we always put it in a bracket. So here, there was 2x cubed. Okay, there was 2x cubed. I have brought x squared out. I haven't brought the 2 out. So it means the 2 remains there. This is 3. This is 2. So it means I'm left with 1x. So I bring it here. So that is this side. Then I go to this side. It's x squared, and I have the whole x squared out. So what will be left is 1. Why is it 1? People say it's 0. It's not 0. x squared divided by x squared. Okay, so I have x times x divided by x times x. So x cancel x, x cancel s, it left it 1. So it's that when you divide a number by itself, you get 1. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 3 divided by 3 is 1. So here what it means is one number times x squared will give me back x squared. So when you are factorizing, that's how you have to understand that whatever you put in the bracket, when you times it with what is outside the bracket, it should give you back your question. So here, if I do x squared times 2x, it will give me 2x cubed. If I do x squared times 1, it gives me x squared. So then you bring your equal to 3. Okay. So from this, you can see that I'm almost getting this here. I want x to be outside. I've got x squared on the outside. So here... I have to take this away from the question. I need to have 3 divided by 2x minus 1. So in this case, it means I have to divide this side here by 2x minus 1. And divide this side here by 2x minus 1. So you can see 2x minus 1 divided by 2x minus 1 goes to 1. So I'm left with x squared on this side equals... I cannot do anything about this because they are not the same. This is a letter. So it remains 3 over 2x minus 1. They want x. And I have x squared. The opposite or the inverse of square is square root. So if it's square and I want it as x, it means I have to take the square root of this one here. So this, I take the square root of that. But remember, whatever you do to the left, you do it to the right side. So I take the square root of this one also. So straight away you can see, 
this is what they want. Okay, when you take the square root of a square, it just crosses out the square, so it's left with x. So our answer to this becomes x equals the square root of 3 all over 2x minus 1, which is what the question asks you to prove. So we have proved that. So always when you are doing this type, you must look at what the answer they gave you is and how you are manipulating, how you are factorizing. Okay, because here they wanted x. So I needed to make sure I get 2x minus 1 here. If this was x squared, I would have just factorized 1x out. So always look at the answer they give you the question and look at your working out. Now let's go to the last one here. This is what I meant by the definition I gave at the beginning of the video that iteration means the repetition of a mathematical process whereby we use the previous answer. So in the question, they give you this. This is of importance. It says starting with x naught equals 1. So that means starting with that answer. So they give you the answer to start from. If the question doesn't give it to you, you may choose your own number. But most of the questions, GCSE level, they will give you the number to start with. So here they say start with 1. In this formula, do it 2 times, twice. Do it 2 times. And that should be the answer they are looking for. So never go more than two times, then you lose the max. If they say three times, do it three times. If they say four times, do it four times. So here, x naught, if you look at the formula, it says n plus one here. Here it has n. So the n stands for the number with the x. So here, n is zero. So that is what you put over here. So if I write a formula again, the equation is this equals 3 over 2xn minus 1. So here, if my n is 0, do you see that if I put 0 here, I'll get x1 because 0 plus 1 is 1. Do you see that? So in this case, I will have this plus 1, okay, equals 3 over 2x of 0 because n is 0 minus 1. I'm doing this step by step for you to understand. I could have skipped all this. So here 0 plus 1 means x1. Okay. Go to this side. You have your 3 over. It says 2 times x0. What is x0 in the question? 1. That is what we do. So we are introducing this previous answer into this. So x0 is what they have given you here. So it means this becomes 2 times 1. Then take away 1. Okay. So then the answer to this would be square root of 3. If I do the denominator, the down number 1, 2 times 1 is 2. Take away 1 is 1. So I get 3 over 1. Square root of 3 over 1 is the same as square root of 3. So when I do it once, my answer is root what? 3. But the question says we should do it how many times? Twice. Two times. So now, I'm not going to use the x naught again. I'm not going to use my x1. Because I've already used this to get a new answer. So if I'm doing it again, you have to use this new answer to do it again. That is what iteration means. So it means you're doing the same thing, but using the new answers you get. So now, let's do it again. Okay? So I'm going to leave that there, clean this one there quickly. And we finish off with this work. So I'm going to do it again. So this time, I'm going to use x0, which is x1, which is square root of what? 3. So our formula, you don't need to always write the formula, but because I'm explaining, that's why I keep writing it. So that's xn plus 1 equals 3 over 2xn minus 1. So here, I'm using this. So my n is now 1, not the, that. 
So this is going to be x, 1 plus 1, 3 over 2x1 minus 1. That reminds you that this is the one you have to use. Okay, iteration. Use your new answer into the new work you are going to do. So here, 1 plus 1 is 2, so it means the second answer, x2, that is the twice, equals 3 over x1 is square root of 3. So it becomes 2 times by square root of 3. Take away 1. This one doesn't have any x there. That's why we don't put anything there. It will always remain as it is because there wasn't any x attached. This is easy. Just put it on your calculator. Use the fraction sign on your calculator because if you want to do this mentally, it's going to take you long. Then you have to use the set. When I talked about set, and then you still have to get an answer. So always in this type, if the question doesn't say leave your answer in set form, then you have to use a calculator at this stage. So at this stage, it did not say leave it in set form. Therefore, I'm going to use a calculator to get the answer to this. So on my calculator quickly, we have 3 over 2 times by root 3 minus 1 and that gives us 1.10339 so I'll leave it as 1.10339 so I'll leave it as 334 to 4 decimal places and that is the estimate the answer that they were looking for Okay, so if they ask you to do three times, then it means in my next one, this will be the number I will use for this sign. So iteration means keep repeating, but keep using the new answers you get. So they gave us x1, we used it, we got root 3. Then they said do it again. So I use my new answer in this one, and I got this. And I have to stop because the question says do it twice. If it was three times, I would have used this, back into the original formula again and get a new answer. So iteration is very easy. It just means keep repeating, but use your new answers that you get to do the new and, uh, calculation. So I will stop here with these three simple questions. I hope it will help you to solve any iteration question you get. And if you still struggle, don't forget to comment and I'll get back to you. Thank you.